Daily Reading Through the Bible, Week 1, Day 3, January 3rd, 2023, Genesis chapters 6 through 8, Psalm 104, Mark chapter 3. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible, netbible.com, copyright 1996, 2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC. All rights reserved. Genesis 6 When humankind began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humankind were beautiful. Thus they took wives for themselves, from any they chose. So the Lord said, My spirit will not remain in humankind indefinitely, since they are mortal. They will remain for 120 more years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after this, when the sons of God would sleep with the daughters of humankind who gave birth to their children. They were the mighty heroes of old, the famous men. But the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind had become great on the earth. Every inclination of the thoughts of their minds was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made humankind on the earth, and he was highly offended. So the Lord said, I will wipe humankind, whom I have created, from the face of the earth, everything from humankind to animals, including creatures that move on the ground, and birds of the air, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a godly man. He was blameless among his contemporaries. He walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was ruined in the sight of God. The earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and indeed it was ruined, for all living creatures on the earth were sinful. So God said to Noah, I have decided that all living creatures must die, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am about to destroy them and the earth. Make for yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you should make it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for the ark and finish it, leaving 18 inches from the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am about to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under the sky all the living creatures that have the breath of life in them. Everything that is on the earth will die. But I will confirm my covenant with you. You will enter the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. You must bring into the ark two of every kind of living creature, from all flesh, male and female, to keep them alive with you, of the birds after their kinds, and of the cattle after their kinds and of every creeping thing of the ground after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you, so you can keep them alive. And you must take for yourself every kind of food that is eaten, and gather it together. It will be food for you and for them. And Noah did all that God commanded him. He did indeed. Genesis 7 the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, for I consider you godly among this generation. You must take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, the male and its mate, two of every kind of unclean animal, the male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird in the sky, male and female, to preserve their offspring on the face of the entire earth. For in seven days I will cause it to rain on the earth, for forty days 
and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the ground every living thing that I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters engulfed the earth. Noah entered the ark along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives because of the flood waters. Pairs of clean animals, of unclean animals, of birds, and of everything that creeps along the ground, male and female, came into the ark to Noah, just as God had commanded him. And after seven days the flood waters engulfed the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day Noah entered the ark, accompanied by his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, along with his wife and his sons' three wives. They entered, along with every living creature after its kind, every animal after its kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life came into the ark to Noah. Those that entered were male and female, just as God commanded him. Then the Lord shut him in. The flood engulfed the earth for forty days. As the waters increased, they lifted the ark and it raised above the earth. The waters completely overwhelmed the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the waters. The waters completely inundated the earth, so that even all the high mountains under the sky were covered. The waters rose more than twenty feet above the mountains, and all living things that moved on the earth died, including birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all humankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. So the Lord destroyed every living thing that was on the surface of the ground, including people, animals, creatures that creep along the ground, and birds of the sky. They were wiped off the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark survived. The waters prevailed over the earth for 150 days. Genesis 8 But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and domestic animals that were with him in the ark. God caused a wind to blow over the earth, and the waters receded. The fountains of the deep and the floodgates of heaven were closed, and the rain stopped falling from the sky. The waters kept receding steadily from the earth, so that they had gone down by the end of the 150 days. On the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on one of the mountains of Ararat. The waters kept on receding until the tenth month. On the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. It kept flying back and forth until the waters had dried up on the earth. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. The dove could not find a resting place for its feet because water still covered the surface of the entire earth, and so it returned to Noah in the ark. He stretched out his hand, took the dove, and brought it back into the ark. He waited seven more days, and then sent out the dove again from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there was a freshly plucked olive leaf in its beak. Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. He waited another seven days and sent the dove out again, but it did not return to him this time. In Noah's six hundred and first year, in the first day of the first month, the waters had
had dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Then God spoke to Noah and said, Come out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you all the living creatures that are with you. Bring out every living thing, including the birds, the animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let them increase and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Noah went out along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, every living creature, every creeping thing, every bird, and everything that moves on the earth, went out of the ark in their groups. Noah built an altar to the Lord. He then took some of every kind of clean animal and clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind even though the inclination of their minds is evil from childhood on. I will never again destroy everything that lives, as I have just done. While the earth continues to exist, planting time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. Psalm 104 Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are magnificent. You are robed in splendor and majesty. He covers himself with light as if it were a garment. He stretches out the skies like a tent curtain. And he lays the beams of the upper rooms of his palace on the rain clouds. He makes the clouds his chariot and travels on the wings of the earth. He makes the winds his messengers, and the flaming fire his attendant. He established the earth on its foundations. It will never be moved. The watery deep covered it like a garment. The waters reached above the mountains. Your shout made the waters retreat. At the sound of your thunderous voice they hurried off. As the mountains rose up and the valleys went down, to the place you appointed them. You set up a boundary for them that they could not cross, so that they would not cover the earth again. He turns springs into streams. They flow between the mountains. They provide water for all the animals in the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky live beside them. They chirp among the bushes. He waters the mountains from the upper rooms of his palace. The earth is full of the fruit you cause to grow. He provides grass for the cattle and crops for people to cultivate, so they can produce food from the ground, as well as wine that makes people glad, and olive oil to make their faces shine, as well as bread that sustains them. The trees of the Lord receive all the rain they need, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted, where the birds make nests, near the evergreens in which the Hurons live. The wild goats live in the high mountains. The rock badgers find safety in the cliffs. He made the moon to mark the months, and the sun sets according to a regular schedule. You make it dark, and night comes, during which all the beasts of the forests prowl around. The lions roar for prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and sleep in their dens. People then go out to do their work and labor until evening. How many things you have made, O Lord! You have exhibited great skill in making all of them. The earth is full of the living things you have made. Over here is the deep wide sea, which teems with innumerable swimming creatures, living things both small and large. The ships travel there, and over here swims the whale you made to play in it. All your creatures wait for you to provide them with food on a regular basis. You give food to them, and they receive it. You open your hand, and they are filled with food. When you ignore them, they panic. 
When you take away their life's breath, they die and return to dust. When you send your life-giving breath, they are created, and you replenish the surface of the ground. May the splendor of the Lord endure. May the Lord find pleasure in the living things he has made. He looks down on the earth, and it shakes. He touches the mountains, and they start to smolder. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God as long as I exist. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I will rejoice in the Lord. May sinners disappear from the earth and the wicked vanish. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Mark 3 Then Jesus entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they could accuse him. So he said to the man who had the withered hand, Stand up among all these people. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath, or evil, to save a life, or destroy it? But they were silent. After looking around at them in anger, grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. So the Pharisees went out immediately and began plotting with the Herodians as to how they could assassinate him. Then Jesus went away with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. And from Judea, Jerusalem, Edomia, beyond the Jordan River, and around Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude came to him when they heard about the things he had done. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, so the crowd would not press toward him. For he had healed many, so that all who were afflicted with disease pressed toward him in order to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. Now Jesus went up the mountain and called for those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve so that they would be with him, and he could send them to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. To Simon he gave the name Peter, to James and his brother, the sons of Zebedee, he gave the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Now Jesus went home, and a crowd gathered, so that they were not able to eat. When his family heard this, they went out to restrain him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The experts in the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. So he called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom will not be able to stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan rises against himself and is divided, he is not able to stand, and his end has come. But no one is able to enter a strong man's house and steal his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can thoroughly plunder his house. I tell you the truth. People will be forgiven for all sins, even all the blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin, because they said, He has an unclean spirit. Then Jesus' mother and his brothers came. Standing outside, they sent word to him to summon him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother 
and your brothers are outside looking for you. He answered them and said, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who were sitting around him in a circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The next daily reading through the Bible, week 1, day 4, January 4th, 2023, Genesis chapters 9 through 11, Mark chapter 4. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible, netbible.com, copyright 1996, 2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC, all rights reserved.